Now, Bola Chinobu was on Monday this week sworn in as assistant president of Nigeria. On his first day at work, he met with the Central Bank of Nigeria Governor Godwin Emefiele and the Group Chief Executive Officer of the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited, Mele Kiari. State House correspondent Adeswa Omorwan reports. Journalists, staff of the State House, government officials, all eagerly await the arrival of President Bola Chinubu on his first day in office. 2.30 p.m. local time, the president's motorcade arrives the villa to a salute and a guard of honor. Accompanied by his wife, First Lady Remy Chinubu, at the forecourt of the villa, he will be received by Vice President Kashim Shatima, Speaker of the House of Representatives, Femi Gwajabiamila, Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Godwin Emefili, Group Chief Executive Officer of the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited, Mele Kiari, the Permanent Secretary of the State House, Tijani Umar, and some political associates. Following the initial greetings, President Tinubu proceeded to a closed-door meeting with his guests. The specific details of the meeting were not disclosed to the public, but it is believed to be connected to the agenda outlined by the President during his inauguration speech on Monday. Meanwhile, earlier in the day, Vice President Kashim Shetima had arrived at his wing of the presidential villa. In his first briefing as Vice President, he emphasizes the need to address the issue of petrol subsidy. The truth of the matter is that we either get rid of the fuel subsidy or the fuel subsidy gets rid of the Nigerian nation. In 2022, we spent $10 billion dollars subsidizing the ostentatious lifestyle of the upper class of the society because you and I benefit 90% from the oil subsidy. The poor 40% of Nigerians benefit very little from the fuel subsidy. And we know the consequences of unveiling a masquerade. We'll get peers opposition from those benefiting from the oil scam. After several hours of deliberations, President Tinubu concluded his first day in office. And as his administration sets its course, the presidency is expected to announce key principal officers, including the state chief of protocol, chief of staff, the secretary to the government of the federation, the presidential spokesperson, amongst others. From the presidential villa, Adesua Omoruan for Arise News. Meanwhile, hours after Buhari handed over to Bola Tinubu as president of Nigeria, he was back to his hometown of Dara in Kasina State in the northwestern part of Nigeria, where thousands of people from within and outside Nigeria had converged to witness a special daba organized in his honor. Organizers of the event, the Daura Emirate Council, said it was done in recognition of the outstanding service the former president had rendered to the nation. The former president, who is the holder of the traditional title by Ajida II, in the company of his wife Aisha, received accolades from the horse riders. The event was attended by the former secretary to the government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, former chief of staff, Ibrahim Gambari, professor, and majority of the ministers who served under him. Last, last week's transition of power from Buhari to Tinubu may not represent a radical change in substance, given that both men are forged from the same political source and remain notable figures in the same political coalition that took Nigeria through eight years of arguably the most difficult time in Nigerian politics and economy. But to help us bring some illumination to the years of Buhari as president, and now Tinobu's succession of his political associate, we are now being joined from our Rice Abuja studio by Senator Adamu Bukachua, who represents Bauchi North District in the National Assembly. Senator Bukachua once called for the impeachment of Buhari because of worsening insecurity in the land 
and is regarded as a highly idealistic, outspoken person who speaks truth to power at all times. Good to have you on the program, distinguished Senator Bukachua. Thank you for joining us. Well, thank you for having me too. Okay, Senator Bukachua, you thought uh, Buhari should have been uh, impeached, <laughs> but he survived. <laughs> he ended up saying, look, Nigeria is better off than he met it. A double has been uh, organized in his hometown by the uh, Casino Emirate Council to receive him. And he has said, oh, okay, if anybody was aggrieved, he has begged for forgiveness. And he's gone. He's in his house. He, he spent eight years. Have you forgiven him? Do you think, really, that he left Nigeria better than he met it? Well, uh, Ruben, you see, presidents come and go, and uh, Buhari has come, and he has gone. And uh, if we look at the records and uh, see what uh, Buhari has done from 2015 to date, uh, no one including his critics, I including myself, who called for his impeachment. Whom I, I actually did that not because I see him as an uh, inefficient or non-performing president, but because there was an issue that was so uh, vital to Nigerians and the common man that uh, we have to say something about it from the Senate floor. And indeed, we looked at it uh, that the insecurities, uh, that insecurity that was going on at that particular time was uh, unattended to and from our own point of view, we have seen that uh, we have done everything possible to make sure that the president gets what he wants in order to fight the insecurity. And we notice that despite our effort, despite our cooperation, the Senate realized that uh, the insecurity was on the increase at that time. So. We had only one choice left for us, which the Constitution uh, allowed us or empower us as a Senate to uh, exercise. And that option was to give notice or to inform Mr. President that we still have that option of impeaching him if he fails to perform as expected, and uh, we have given all the resources, the taxpayers' money, to him, and he has, according to him, uh, uh, given the uh, service chiefs and all security agencies what they requested for. Therefore, we have no option but to inform him that uh, well, the last option that we had never exercised would be to tell him that we have given him uh, six weeks notice to improve the security situation. Otherwise, we will go ahead and start impeachment process. That was what happened. And uh, we are not unaware of some of the good things he has done. And uh, definitely, there are a lot of very laudable uh, developmental and um, infrastructural developments that he has brought about. And uh, as we continue in this uh, 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 interview, I think we will get to them and uh, I will mention some of them. Well, but Senator, on the question of security, are you now saying 
that uh, President Buhari, before leaving office, achieved the objective of leaving Nigeria a better place in terms of security than he met it. I need some no. clarification. Um, you, you see, in, in effect, well, you know, the, the security situation worsened by leaps and bounds. When he came in in 2015 as, as president, the situation in the Northeast, which was the only area of Nigeria that was threatened, was far worse than at the time he left it. That one, I will give him a plus in his scorecard. But then, along the line, new security threats emerged in Kasina, his own state, in Zamfara, in Sokoto, in Niger state, and in fact, in Abuja, the capital territory itself. So, uh, what I would say on that new development is that uh, I don't think he had time to uh, really address these issues adequately because those issues arose uh, very late in his te second tenure. Therefore, um, I will say he has tried his best and uh, he, I know he called meetings of service chiefs and warned them and if they didn't perform to his satisfaction, then uh, the blame should not only go to him, it should also go to the service chiefs. Okay, Senator, uh, when the uh, president was speaking in the, uh, you know, winding down process of his administration, he said his administration had done well with COVID. He said his administration has provided more food. He said his administration has done a lot with regard to infrastructure, railways, the second Niger Bridge. He said uh, his administration has also done a lot with regard to women empowerment. He also cited reforms that his uh, administration has brought to bear. And there's an 80-page document provided by the Presidential Communications uh, uh, Council detailing all of this in uh, more than uh, 80 pages. And you spoke earlier that you did well in certain regards. What are those areas in which you did well? Because he talked about the economy. Did he do well, perhaps, with regard to the economy? Yes, I think I would say he has, because it was his time that the Digital Economy Ministry was created. And I can tell you, the revenue that the federal government now drives from the Ministry of Digital Economy is really commendable. And you, can, you know that the world over, now I, IT is the in thing. And uh, the ministry, former Ministry of Communication, uh, which is now the Ministry of Digital Economy, has been transformed and they are uh, driving uh, good revenue returns. And I can tell you, if you have means to check, please go and check and find out how far, you know, the uh, revenue drive has improved between the time it was the Ministry of Communication and the time it became Ministry of Digital Economy. And on the infrastructure and uh, side, you know the railway situation when he came in was in fact, I would say zero. Of, although the uh, Good Luck Administration had started something, but those uh, uh, projects that were started during Good Luck administration uh, had not gone far and at that time we had serious problem with funding those projects and 
the Goodluck administration was depending more on its own oil revenue because oil was selling very well in the world market. But when he came in, we had to secure loans that, that could be uh, paid back with the infrastructure that the, the loan was deployed for. Like the railway between Lagos and Ibadan, which will now eventually uh, come up to the north when completed, up to Abuja. And now if you see the Abuja Kaduna Railway, which he started and completed and commissioned, is now functioning. Even though we had security challenges, uh, well, that is expected in a developing nation. Even okay. the United States had okay. this problem in their early years of uh, independence. That is all. And the Kano Kaduna uh, railway sector, which uh, he also initiated, is now an ongoing project. And if you care to go and see the project, it's on right now, and they have made substantial progress. Okay. Now, the second Niger Bridge, which was a long talked about uh, project, was only on paper for many years. But eventually, when Buhari came, he started the whole project anew, afresh, and now that it is being commissioned, it is a reality, and anybody that lives in Asaba or thereabout would know that the bridge is now in place and uh, motorists use it. Senator. So I think you cannot just sign off Senator. and uh, say these are no developments or these are no progress. Well, we Senator. have in the past, yes. Okay, I just wanted to intervene can, to, get, to, you. to get a clarification. I mean, you were that person yes. who said, look, Buhari should be impeached. But now that Buhari has left the place, yes. you are now singing his praises. You left uh, the APC. No, I am not. I am not. No, 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 no just a moment. Just a moment. Just a moment, sir. You, yes. le you left the PDP to join the APC because you thought Buhari was not performing. Yes. Now Buhari has left. You are saying, oh, he, yeah. has, he has done this, he has done that. Are you planning to go back <laughs> to the APC? I would like to know. No, no, listen, listen. I want you to know the reasons for my leaving APC are not because of Buhari's performance. No. And we will leave that topic for another day. But then you say I was singing, I'm singing his praises after calling for his impeachment. But truly, when we, weigh, uh, we checked and, and weighed the performance after the threat and the notice of six weeks to improve security situation, we noticed that the improvement has actually taken place. We noticed in the Senate, we debated it, and we uh, agreed that, yes, after that, uh, uh, Buhari has uh, really uh, stood up to his uh, expectation and he called the uh, service chiefs and uh, stakeholders in terms of security and he really asked them to sit up and they did. And the situation improved because after that, it has taken quite a while. In fact, I would say since then, Abuja Kaduna Road had been safe. So why can't I say the truth when I see it? Okay, so Senator. I am not singing his praises well, because Senator, I have changed his mind. Senator, except that the truth is relative. But let, let me go to the next uh, segment of the issue. On Monday, um, President okay. Bola Ahmed Tinubu assumed office as assistant president of Nigeria. And before then, President Buhari had told us that, look, Tinubu is the best candidate 
for Nigeria and that Nigerians have chosen well. Have you chosen well? What are your thoughts? <laughs> yeah, I think we have because, listen, this uh, question of uh, fuel subsidy removal, actually, uh, I would say it was the Buhari administration that removed fuel subsidy. And they set a date when uh, subsidy removal will commence. And he chose a period during which he would have left the presidency and handed over to whoever was his predecessor. And at that time, it happens to be Abola Ahmed Tinibu as the new president. So Tinibu had no choice. The subsidy had already been removed since the Senate and the National Assembly generally passed the bill on petroleum industry. And uh, Buhari signed it into law. And in that uh, act, the subsidy had been removed. So I would say Tidibu had no uh, option but to implement what he was handed over. It's just like that, that he was given a sick baby to handle. So it's up to him now to get the medicine to cure that baby or to be careless enough to let this baby die in his own hands. So I wouldn't say it was his fault. But what I would expect of him at this uh, time is to make sure that he goes back into the records and uh, ask the NMPC who were earlier during an executive council meeting given $250 million by the Ad Buhari administration to uh, refurbish Port Harcourt, Kaduna, and Wari refineries. Now, I think uh, the new president, Bola Ahmed Tinibu, should now call an MPC to account for that $250 million and to tell him what is the stage of repairs for these three refineries. Because if you remove subsidy, which has, is a foregone conclusion, uh, you need to make sure that petrol is refined in the country to reduce the impact. But if we continue to import, we don't have enough revenue, enough foreign currency to pay for the importation. This is a fact that is there for facing Tinibu, glaring him in the face. So uh, I think what I would expect him to do is to explain to the Nigerian public that this removal was not his own making. It was done earlier, and it was handed over to him like that. Okay, so, so I would expect him to check back and make sure that the money allocated was utilized. And if it's not, then he will ask those people to account for it. And if necessary, get them arrested. OK, Senator Bukachu so, has I think, prepared. Um, as we prepare to wrap up this, <coughs> should I be surprised tomorrow if you return to the APC? It would be because I don't intend to. So your perfect answer I don't to that intend to is a no to the APC. So what's there, nice for you? I said we should, uh, Ruben, please, if you will arrange another time to spend half an hour for me to explain why I left the APC and accomplish what I had promised the leadership of APC that I would do when I leave APC, then please find time to arrange for this meeting and for this interview okay. to, for we'll me be, to explain. We'll be glad to invite if you again. I think it's so important. Thank you. Yes, we'll be glad to invite you again. Thank, Thank you, you very that. much for joining us on this Elardi Sunday Talk Show.